Hello everybody. In this video I will show you several magnet arrays that have the poles shifted 90 degrees towards each other. So for example we have south pole here and also south pole here but the north poles are all in this direction. And with a regular magnet as you might know the poles are separated 180 degrees from each other like for example we have north pole here and south pole here this is not the case with these arrays and i will show you this in several examples and also explain to you why this happens and some things about polarity itself so stay tuned because this will be interesting video for example here you can see on this side we have the south pole here and on this side also south pole and on the outsides here it's all north pole same goes of course for this array south pole over here south pole over here and all the outsides it's all north pole and i will just quickly show you this under a magnetic viewing film you can see the white circle or the white line is what separates the polarities so you can see it if I go further away the ring also grows if i view it from the side here you can see the outside here where we have our north pole is separate with the white lines and on top and bottom over here we have our south poles and i'll just quickly show you how i made these arrays and what magnets i used for this so all of the south poles are facing inwards with these arrays and of course the north poles are facing outwards and I took magnets like this one which are magnetized along this plane i will show you this under the field viewer and as you can see the white line is what separates the polarities so we got south pole on this side north pole on this side and now I will show you some simpler arrays like this one for example. This one is easier to build and is also the same array. It has eight 5 mm cube magnets which are all the same poles facing to the center. And this gives us also the same array. In this case all the north poles are facing to the center. So we have north pole on here and also north pole on this side and all the south poles are on the outside. You can do the same even simpler with an array like this where I just took four of these 10 millimeter disc magnets and arranged them in a circular pattern or you could even say in a rectangular pattern. Doesn't matter, they're all facing to the center with the same polarity. So south pole on here and south pole on here on both sides of course and on the outside we have the north pole and this is what it looks like under the field viewer very similar so now comes the interesting part what i want to show you about polarity itself and what polarity actually means so if we take a regular disc magnet like this we have obviously on one side the south pole and the other side the north pole and what does this mean this basically means we have a vortex or a magnetic vortex on one side that is spinning clockwise on the other side it's spinning counterclockwise and this is what differs south pole from north pole the rotate the rotation direction of the vortex on each side we also have a smaller vortex in the center here, but we leave that away from the explanation for sake of simplicity for now. And I made some tools like this one, a copper spiral to visualize that for you a bit easier and better. What I mean by these rotation directions of the vortices that you see. So for example, viewed from here, this would be the two vortices, one going this and one like this, like two tornadoes on each side. And you can see this even better 
with this white line if, or the white circle. If I go away from the magnet, you can see the circle grows. If I go further towards it, the circle gets smaller. If I could put the, the field viewer inside the magnet, yeah, the circle would get even smaller. And now to show you this in very simple terms, if you view this from here, you can see the rotation direction or the direction in which yeah, the spiral goes is always the same. It doesn't change from one end to the other. But if I view this from this side, we can see it starts from here in a clockwise spinning direction going towards the center. And if I view it from this side, we still go in the same direction from the spiraling from inwards to outwards. And you can see it spirals out in a counterclockwise direction. So if you still didn't get what I mean, I will have another object which simplifies this even more. This is just a knife. You can take any stick with two poles and just you have two poles, one pole here and one pole here. And I start to rotate the object in one direction. In this case, I will rotate it in a clockwise direction. And now still keeping the same rotation direction, I will turn the object 180 degrees. The rotation direction was always kept the same. So what you see here is now we have a counterclockwise rotation. Still keep the rotation direction the same and rotate it again 180 degrees. And you can see on this pole we have a clockwise direction again. And this is what I mean by with uh, the, the magnetic field of a regular magnet the rotation direction of the field is actually the same, but it's a matter of perspective that on, if you look at from this side, we have a clockwise spin of the field and here we have a counterclockwise spin of the field. Even though the whole field, like shown here, is just spinning in one direction, as you can see here. But now the interesting part with these arrays that have the same polarities on both ends, meaning south pole over here and south pole over here, this means we must have a change in the spin direction of the field right at the center point. And I made a different spiral coil which visualizes that. So as you can see here in the center part, um, the rotation direction changes. That means if we view it from here, we start with a clockwise direction going to the center and we turn it around 180 degrees and also coming from the center to the outside, rotating in a also clockwise direction, as you could see here. So this is visualized what you see on these arrays. Also with the white ring, you can see if I go further away, it grows. And yeah, if I could put a coil in there, this is what the field would look like. And yeah, this is this change in rotation direction here is what um, makes it that we have the same poles on each side. And another interesting aspect of this is that, like with most circular rays and all ring magnets, in the center we have zero magnetic flux. I will first off show you this with the small array and the field viewer, because I can go in with the corner of my field viewer to the center point and hopefully you can see this on camera. You can see the bright spot here. Yeah, hopefully you can see it. The bright spot right at the corner or even a blank spot is 
where the city, now you can see the blank spot right on the corner. This is where no magnetic flux is. This is the rest point of the field. Here we have no rotation or zero magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is just rotation of the field basically. And whoops, now I get my Gauss meter and show you this with the big array. And here I have the probe. This is just a black dot here. This is the Gauss probe itself. And I will put it in there. And as you can see, um, all along here, feel is actually quite strong. It shows, yeah, over 500 millitesla on the edge here, where we have the strongest magnetic flux. And if I go to the center in here, and get right perfectly to the center point. Hopefully I can get it. Yeah, close enough. You can see we have zero millitesla or no magnetic flux. I know I can't get it right now, but I've done it where I could get to zero. It's just a really small point that I have to reach. But you get the idea right at the center there is no magnetic flux with any ring magnet and also with these circular magnet arrays. And to show you this, I have another quite interesting demonstration, which is just a needle, steel needle. It's obviously attracted over here to all the magnets because it's made from iron. But since right in the center we have no magnetic flux, I can actually drop the needle straight through it if I get the, the distance right and drop it right through the center. You could probably hear it. It touched the table and then bounced up again and then was attracted to the sides. But first it fell right through it and yeah, didn't stop or was attracted to the side. If there weren't a table underneath here, it would just drop to the floor and wouldn't bounce back up. So yeah, I did this experiment several times off camera. You have to get it right to the center point. If you don't get it right, it will get attracted to the sides. But right now I also did it, as you could probably hear, it just hit the table and then bounced up again and was attracted. But first it went to the center. Anyway, this is just a fun little experiment with these arrays. What you can actually do with them, hmm, that's to be found out. I think it's very interesting to see with these arrays that they have the polarities 90 degrees offset to each other and not 180 degrees. And that we actually have, and what is, I think, most importantly, a uh, flip in rotation direction of the field itself. So it's not like I showed you earlier with these coils, where um, on, on this coil, it's all the same rotation direction. While on this coil here, right at the center, the rotation direction flips. So... Yeah, with these arrays, the rotation direction flips. And that's why we have same polarity on each side. I know I repeated myself now, so I will end the video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And hope I didn't bore you. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and goodbye.